Hello all, welcome back to Learning Partner. If you are new, please do subscribe. This is another channel where you can directly connect with me. We have around 1000 plus members already who are working. We take live coding sessions and everything so to just get notified about those sessions. Please do join this group. So till now we have completed our basic API integration. Like uh, in the component only we have done the API call. After that we have created service. In the service we have moved our API call function code, right? Now, again, we are coming back to the component. So when we talk about component, in component, there are any lifecycle events for a component. So lifecycle events are something, uh, these are something functions which get automatically called. Let's say in a component, if we create any function, so that function is not going to be get automatically called. We have to call that function on a button click or a drop down change, somewhere we have to call. But these are there are some kind of functions from the component which are automatically executed, but it will execute on the some events. Okay, so now there are some events which happens in a component, and on those events we can write a code also. So those are nothing but component lifecycle event. So there there are around seven or eight lifecycle events. So we are going to see this now. So basically, what are lifecycle event? We are going to discuss what are the various types we have. And out of that, what is the what are the mostly used lifecycle event that we should be aware? Of? Fine. So let's start. Fine. So let's start it. So this is the same component, post API component we were using. So in this component only, I will explain. Or let's create separate component that will be better. Then we will again use this component to actually see the use. So I'm just creating a component. Let me quickly come create a component. Enter. Once we create the component, we need to create the route also. Let's create a route. What will be lifecycle? The component lifecycle event. And then we need to add it in the route also. So let's add it in the route. And let's save, let's close. So now we will be having one C. So we got the route and uh, that component is also getting loaded. Now, where we created that life cycle, life cycle. Yeah. Okay. Let me just zoom a little bit. Fine. So this is our component. Now, component or a directive. Uh, we have not seen like how we create, create custom directive. Component is also a kind of directive. So whatever the life cycle we have in component, those life cycle will be in the directive also. Fine. Now, how do we uh, write the event on those life cycle event? So first, there are many life cycle events starting with ng on init. Then ng after we win it so many lifecycle events are there so let's create it one by one so whenever we have to implement the lifecycle event on the class level we have to implement it so implements first lifecycle event which we are going to implement is ng on init so if you have to use ng on init lifecycle event so you will write over here on init see it is suggesting once you click on it now it will add import at the top also and now see once we implement this now it is saying we are uh, we are getting one error that we need to implement this function also. It's like those who are from uh, .NET or Java background or those new hoops. So it's like we are inheriting this component. So once we inherit, we need to implement the function related to it. So that is ng on it. See, all lifecycle events are will start with like this. But when you implement the function, you have to write it with ng. See, now error is gone. Right? Now what I will do, I will simply add a console in every lifecycle event, console.log, this will be like ng on init. Then comma, implement word you will have, you have to only write once. Then after ng on it, after view in it. So see, whenever I'm implementing it, it will ask us to implement that function also, ng after view in it, like this. Let's copy paste. Let me just complete it, then I will explain ng sorry after view checked 
view checked next life cycle event ng after view checked these are the various life events life cycle events we have each has various purpose like ng on init where we what we do in ng on it what we do in ng after in it it everything has a proper purpose then content after view check then after content in it ng after content in it then after content in it we will have after content check g after content checked again console log i will print it over here why i'm adding the console log so that you will get to see like which function get called when that's right then on destroy G on destroy. Fine. And before that, before all the life cycle event, we will have constructor also. This is an interview question. They will ask you like what will execute first, constructor or ng on it. So by default, constructor will execute first. Because constructor realize whenever this class object is created, class is invoked, constructor will get automatically invoked, right? After that, it will get to know like this is a component class. Then your lifecycle event will start trigger. One more is their ng on changes, but we won't be able to uh, see the practical implementation of ng on in it over here. In next episode, I will complete input and output. There we will be seeing that ng on changes. Fine. Let's save it. Now let's open the console. Now I will move back to the post API. Now just pay attention to the console. Once I navigate to this lifecycle component, see, first constructor got executed, then ng on init, then content in it, content check, view in it, view check. So these are the various lifecycle event we have. Again, one more is there ng on changes, but that we are not able to see it over here. We will check that in a reusable component when we create input and output. Fine, so it has a sequence. First, ng on changes will be there that we didn't implement it then enjoy on in it content in it content check view in it view check okay now what is the purpose of this so this ng on it when your component got initialized this event will get triggered automatically okay then let's move this at the top then your content means let's say in your component you are using a PDF or an image or something. So it will, when that content, external content is getting started to initialize, this event will get triggered. Once all the external content are been properly loaded, then this event will trigger content check. Then all your view has been successfully initialized. Let's say your component template and in that component, if you are using any third, uh, any uh, another component by using the selector, its view also in, uh, initialized, then this function will trigger. Once all the views are properly initialized and checked, then this function will trigger. And when we redirect from one component to another, means when this component is going to be destroyed, this lifecycle event will trigger. So see, currently ng and destroy, you are not able to see. But as soon as I redirect to somewhere else, then you get to see it. So when our component is getting destroyed, means we are navigating from one component to another, then ng and destroy will get triggered. So if you have to write some code before your component is getting destroyed, you can write that piece of code over here. See what I can do alert. You are leaving page, just a message I'm giving. Let's go to lifecycle event. Now, once I try to navigate, it will show this. You are trying to leave the page. Once you click on okay, then it will redirect to that page. Got it? So if you have to write some code when you use, user is redirecting from your component to somewhere and before redirection, you need to do something. So that piece of code, you will write it over here. Once your component is initialized, after that, you need to do something. So that piece of code, you will do it over here. Normally, we write API call function code over here. Okay. Then ng on it, it is the directive what we mostly use. Then ng on changes is also there, but that we will see in the next episode. Then 
ng after view unit. Once your view is successfully initialized, then you need to write some code. So that you do over here and ng on register. So out of these, ng on init, on init we mostly use for API call function. We call API call function triggers from over here. Then ng after view init. This we mostly use. When we use in case of view child, in case of getting reference of element, we use it. Means our once our view is successfully initialized, then only we can get the access of the particular element. Correct? So in that scenarios, we use it. And ng on destroy. When we have to write some code, when user is redirecting from my component. So these are the four lifecycle event. ng on changes, ng on init, ng after view init, and ng on destroy. These are the four lifecycle events which we mostly use. For content, we have very less scenarios where when we use content in it content checked and content in it events. Fine. Got it. So these are the various lifecycle events. Now let's see the practical implementation. Let's save it. Now, if you remember in CRUD operation, wait, sorry. In this post API, let me just close it. Let's go to post API. So just pay attention to the network tab. Once we go to the post API, see over here. What should happen once we load this component, my API call should be there get and my data should be visible. But right, right now, what is happening? I have to click on this button. Then my API call will be there. Then my data is getting loaded. But why user will click now? By default, when I'm loading, when, whenever I'm going to this page, by default on the page load, our API call should be there. Right? So now this thing we can normally do in ng on end. So we don't need this button. So let's get rid of this. So what we need to do, we need to implement our ng on init. So implement on init. Fine. Once we implement, it will throw the error. We need to implement our ng on init function. ng on init. And this function we will call inside this. So means when your component get initialized, this function will trigger. And in this function, we are calling this function. So by default, your API call will be there. See now. So once I navigate to post API, see by default on the page load, we have the API call. Now I don't need that button to load the API call. Got it? So this is how actually we use. So what is the purpose of ng on it? We use ng on it to trigger the API call function. What is the use of constructor? This is again interview question. So constructor we normally use just to initialize the variable. Either we can initialize variable over here like this or in the constructor we can initialize. Let's say I have created a variable. Let's say first name. This is an interview question. Data type is string equal to I'm initializing with empty. But let's say once the page load, I want to initialize or we don't initialize variable value over here. Now it will say like you need to initialize it. So in the constructor, we can initialize like this. See, error got away. So this is the practical way. This is how you should declare the variable and in the constructor you should initialize. But normally just to save the time, we do like this also. Got it? So the use of constructor is just to initialize the variable. The use of ng on it is to trigger the API call function. So from here, our API call function should trigger. Some guys will initiate this API call from constructor, but this is wrong. We should not use constructor to make our API call initialization function. Got it? So we should use ng on init for that. Right? Now let's check an example of ng after view init. How do we use that? So in the post API, first we will go to our lifecycle event. So over here now we had this ng after view unit. So we have something performance dot get what is that performance dot time. Let, let me check it. So performance dot now was there. Okay. So see, currently in lifecycle event, we are using in ng after view unit, we are using uh, performance dot now. Okay. Now, same thing in lifecycle event, we don't have so, something so much HTML, just I have a text box and a label. Now, if same thing ng after view unit, we will try to integrate in our post component after view unit. Fine. Then we have to write ng after view unit. And here also we will try to print the 
console.log after view init and here also performance dot now fine now just see the difference of between these two from life cycle event and the post api post api has so much of html code right so let's see just remove this so in life cycle event also i'm in ng after event, i'm trying to get the performance dot now and over in the post api also we have it in post api we have certain html but in the life cycle we don't have some html so see the difference now so let's go to template form now if i navigate to the life cycle event see in life cycle event we have got something around 9500 something let's put it over here and if i navigate to the post api see it has taken around 32000 something see the difference so this performance thing we use to measure like how much our ui is taking time to load got it in life cycle event we didn't have any html so it has taken around 19000 something but in post api we have particular html so it has taken 32000 something got it so we use ng after we win it when we have to do the performance calculation like how much time my ui is getting time to ui is taking time to render got it again we use this in a view child again we are we have not completed view child or if any third party library again i'm telling you like uh, these things we have not covered yet but once we see the view child now then there again i will explain the purpose of view child okay so these are the various life cycle events we have out of that for now whenever you have to make the api call you will write your api call function like this and this function you will trigger from the ng on in it fine so that's it with this video again in next episode we are going to explore so many topics like uh, now the basic topics are done so now we are slowly moving to the advanced topics okay so that's it in next video we will discuss on input and the output how do we create reusable component that we are going to discuss again if you are new please do like and subscribe and to join my whatsapp link or whatsapp group also it is link you will be find in the description fine that's it thank you